Hello lovely people and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm just going to show you how I drew this ostrich using just black ink and a spray bottle filled with water. I'm also going to chat briefly about Jake Parker's mantra of finished not perfect and I will try if I can to link the video in the description box below. But for now back to the painting and you'll notice that I've masked out or that the top of the ostrich is blue so that is just masking fluid which I put on there to protect the eyes and the beak of the ostrich just from getting splattered with paint because I was using this spray technique. So this was an experiment really and I did try it on a practice piece of paper before I actually went onto my proper actual artwork and tried it out and I used the same paper that I was going to use for the actual piece just so that I would know how the ink and the spray would react together. And the important thing when you're doing this, if you're going to give it a go, is to make sure that your paper or the board that your paper is um, taped to is tilted at an angle. So it was raised at the top to make sure that the flow of water was down towards me. So basically all I did was use a light grey wash to start with, wetted my paper and then dropped into it some ink and then sprayed on top with my water spray. And this created a kind of, oh, what kind of effect? Well you can see what kind of effect it created, it was really cool. And I just built up several layers controlling the direction of the flow obviously with the tilted board but also as you can see pulling some of that ink um, using a small round paintbrush into the direction of the feathers. Now remembering that ink dries quite a bit lighter than when you first put it on I went in with several layers just repeating those steps so just dropping in the ink and pulling out with the paintbrush into that sort of feathered shape from the center of his neck. And that was, as I say, just following the direction of the feathers and it created a really cool effect and I was quite happy with that. It's something I haven't tried before and it kind of gives the piece a bit more of a loose kind of different feel and different texture. I just kept going over this a couple of times whilst the water underneath was still wet and blotting out anything I wasn't too happy with with a piece of tissue and that kind of gave me a bit of control as to where it was going and how much water was going on there but it's something really fun to try did it the sort of bolder I got with how much ink to apply so although it was in layers I did go in with a slightly darker wash after the initial area that I'd done as you can see and gradually I built that effect up until I was happy with the result So the other thing that I was going to mention was Jake Parker. Now he is the creator of Inktober, if I haven't mentioned that before. Go check him out on YouTube, he's a really great artist and he came up with this mantra that I stumbled upon on YouTube the other day of finish not perfect. And the idea was this, that it is more important to finish a piece than worry that it's not perfect and not finish it at all. So I found this really helpful and inspirational and it was kind of a bit of a light bulb moment for me because so often when I'm drawing or painting I end up thinking oh it's not good enough or that there's so many things that need to be improved that I end up, not that I don't finish it because I usually try and finish it but that I'm not happy with the end result but this mantra of finish not perfect made me realize that 
as long as you finish a piece then you can learn from that you can learn from actually creating a piece of artwork and learning the things that you were proud of with that piece and also learning from the things that you weren't so happy with and that you can improve on next time so I think this challenge for Inktober has it's forced me to kind of finish a piece every day because that's the challenge that I set myself that's not to say that everyone doing Inktober has had to do a piece every day whatever your challenge within Inktober was then that's fine if it was just one piece a week or two pieces a week for the month of October then as long as you've done that that's your challenge and that's fine but I set myself the challenge of doing a piece of artwork every day and so far I've kept up with that but it has it has been quite hard but it has made me complete a picture every day and I was thinking about this and I think that if I hadn't been doing the challenge would I have created 31 pictures by the end of the month no I probably wouldn't I probably would have created one that I would have touched up and changed and revisited several times over so by kind of doing this challenge and by adopting that mantra of finish not perfect rather than having one piece that I might have done by the end of the month I have actually got 31 albeit smaller pieces that I finished by the end of the month and even if I'm only really happy with half a dozen or a dozen of those pieces that's still far more by forcing myself to finish them that's still far more than I would have um, completed or created if I hadn't been doing this challenge so in that way I think it's a really good thing and the important thing is that Obviously, the more that you do, the more art that you create, and the more frequently that you finish a piece, the better you will naturally become anyway. So, with Finish Not Perfect, and making sure that the aim is to actually call a picture finished, and put your pen down, and draw a line under it, and move on, then you are actually, you're learning from it, and you're able to yeah, take what you've learned and move on. So for all the pieces that I've done for Inktober, they are available on my Instagram account and on Twitter. And if you are interested to see those, then you can look those up and they will be under Art Cadets, which is my other YouTube channel for kids art. So check those out and yeah, not all of them are brilliant, but some of them obviously I'm more happy with than others. And as I say, I wouldn't have been able to have completed this if it wasn't for the challenge and if I hadn't made myself finish a piece every day. So part of becoming an amazing artist is having the ability to finish what you started and move on and what's perfect anyway because certainly with art it's something that what one person likes somebody else might not and yeah I think you just have to be able to be a bit strict with yourself not be so critical be really positive about your work and probably a lot of artists find that really hard I certainly do it's difficult not to compare yourself to other other artists who have got a lot of talent and the thing is I think as I've mentioned before you've got to just be really amazed by them and in awe of them and that's great but don't let it affect um, your painting or creating because you will naturally become better every time you paint something and that's exciting and that's what I look forward to and in not finishing something because it's not perfect you're not actually going to move on and be able to get that much better unless you can draw a line under it each time and move on 
so I think I really learned from that and hopefully in kind of talking to you guys about it then you might be able to take something away from that too and it's also I think given me permission if that sounds weird but it's also allowed me to think it's okay to finish a piece when you don't think it's perfect because quite often artists are their own worst critics and they will see what others don't see so what I might see when I look at my finished finished ostrich I might see that the eyes aren't quite how I wanted them or whatever I'm not happy with other people probably don't see all those little things because they they like the overall piece finished and they haven't spent how long did this piece take me about three hours so they haven't spent the last three hours looking at it so to them they haven't got all that worry or that um, time invested in looking at it like that So yes, be positive about your art and be able to finish things, finish what you started and look at the good that you've done and think, and I'm quite excited even to think that even in six weeks time, whatever I'm going to draw is going to be better as a result of finishing what I'm doing today and the whole Inktober experience has it's given me some good artwork to look back on but it's also taught me some lessons about being more timely with my paintings and less critical of myself so there was a bit there where I think my camera might have run out of battery and I carried on without realizing it because I did some more dark inking around the eyes but just to finish off this picture I just went in with a light wash to show um, the feathers on the top of the ostrich's head and my plan was to just go in with a black fine liner to finish off those feathers because I never wanted or never really had the thought that this would be a completely photorealistic piece of artwork. I wanted it to be a bit more loose, a bit more experimental, trying out new things and giving sort of the illusion of feathers and the illusion of um, a sort of, um, yeah, I'm not putting into words what I'm thinking, but just kind of making it look a bit more creative than actually photorealistic. So I use my white gel pen to just add some highlights and then went in with my black fine liner as I said just to finish off with like the eyelashes and the hairs on the top of his head. in the background is my guinea pigs being really um, noisy because now I've moved my computer into my art room where they are they kind of get to be in the background of all my videos so when I was doing the the hairs under his beak here I did think about at one point going down the whole of his neck and just doing some fine hairs but I really didn't want to spoil the effect that I'd got using the spray bottle for um, the neck feathers so I just kind of did some um, sort of fine hairs using that fine liner around his beak and on the top of his head and left the neck as it was. So if you've got any 
comments or thoughts on either this piece or on Inktober itself or indeed on the idea of finish not perfect how do you feel about that um, then do drop them in the comments box below because all your feedback and thoughts are really appreciated and if you subscribe to my channel as well that will be great because after next week we'll be finishing Inktober and we'll be moving on to something else so I might be doing a product review or I might be doing another painting I haven't quite decided yet but if there's something that you would like or you have any comments on what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future then do drop them in the comments box below So I think that's all for today's video, I'll let you watch the last few minutes and don't forget as I say to like, comment and subscribe and thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next week, bye!